Hello YouTube, we are on the dawn of a new era where this headline is no longer true. We have now surpassed 400 gigabytes on a micro SD card. And let's see what's coming out within the next month that's gonna blow your mind. Okay, maybe this isn't gonna blow your mind, but there's now been an official press release that Integral is releasing a 512 gigabyte micro SD card. Now this isn't the first 512 gigabyte SD card, it's the first micro SD card. And as you know, a micro SD card is, you know, one quarter the size of an SD card. To be able to fit that much information on such a small little thing the size of your fingernail is pretty freaking cool. Now, first off, I wanna start with why should you even care? Why is this gonna to matter to the average person? Well, in general, it's gonna lower the price of all the smaller micro SD cards. So your 32s, your 64s, your 128 gigabyte micro SD cards are gonna to continue to price drop. I think this year we're gonna see a huge price drop, just like we saw last year. I mean, I remember in the beginning of the year, I was spending close to $40 for a 64 gig, and now to me, $20 is the average price of a 64 gigabyte class 10 uh, micro SD card. So that's really cool. And then the other thing I think where this is gonna really uh, hit people, as I mentioned in my previous video, when I was talking about this 400 gigabyte micro SD card, is those people running the Nintendo Switch and those people uh, that are using it for like a MacBook Pro, where the MacBook Pro is limited in the amount of space Space you can get on it because it's such a small form factor and I'm sure there's a lot of other small form factor devices out there that will benefit from this as well but for those people with the Raspberry Pi or for other things I don't think you're gonna go out and buy a 400 or 512 gigabytes unless you're just a baller like that and if you are you know don't let me get in your way go ahead and uh, grab one of these now I'll definitely put a link in the description once this is available um, this is a class 10 just like the SanDisk um, it is a reputable brand, just like SanDisk is. I have no hesitation recommending that if this is something you want to go ahead and get. Uh, now, first off, let's talk about price because I think that's the biggest thing here, which is like, a, like I said, a 64 gigabyte is about $20. And uh, this 400 gigabyte is $249. Um, I did the math on that. It's about 63 cents per gigabyte, which actually, you know, when you think about per gigabyte and you break it down, you're like, that's not bad. But you know, it's still at the end of the day on your credit card or whatever, that's $250. And uh, I broke down the per gigabyte, which is about 63 cents. So with the math that I did on this one, I, I believe it would cost about $333. Yeah, so here's my math. At the 63 cents times 512 gigabytes, you're probably gonna spend somewhere about $322.56. I mean, if this thing prices at $299.99, I would say that that is gonna definitely put a run for its money over the SanDisk, put a little pressure on them. Uh, now, as far as performance, they're not built the same. Um, I believe they all have the same warranty and they all have splash resist and things like that. That's definitely standard for a lot of these micro SD cards. But the Sandus Ultra is slightly faster, um, saying file read speeds up to 100 megabytes per second, where the integral here is saying a maximum of 80 megabytes per second. And if you've been around my channel, I've done a lot of micro SD and SD card tests now. And uh, in my opinion, you're probably not gonna get 80 megabytes per second. Uh, you're probably gonna get probably somewhere in the middle of 50 and 60 megabytes per second, maybe better. Um, and then on this one, probably 10 to 20% to, to better than that. Uh, but in my, if you see my reviews and things, if you're running a switch or whatever, you know, you're not going to see a benefit on those write speeds. Anything over 40 or 50 is, is plenty fast enough. Um, for those people going into photography, I don't recommend this just because I would rather have 128 gig or 256 gigabyte. I mean, it's really not that big of an advantage here to go with something like this. Um, I think the biggest heated debate on all of this is how the Nintendo Switch, a lot of the games are only available via download or the way that Nintendo is pushing them is via download. So having a large storage capacity is the only way to store a large collection on the Nintendo Switch, especially the portability factor. So um, I think that's where a lot of this clientele is gonna go is either expanding your MacBook or some sort of laptop that's a small form factor, a compact laptop, or it's gonna be for the Nintendo Switch. And for all we know in the future, we're gonna get more systems that are, gonna, that are going to use that type of writing where you, 
download the games. I think that we're just going to see more and more and more of that because um, I just don't see an immediate um, an immediate solution. Uh, something I can see is a lot of it going on the cloud where you would just store your information on the cloud. I really think that's going to be the smarter move as far as um, storage in future gaming devices because on because we're eventually going to be in a place where we're always going to be connected to the internet. You know, Wi-Fi will be on our buses, Wi-Fi will be everywhere, um, or you know, our phone will just constantly be uh, a hotspot. You know, and uh, we'll get the temperatures down on our phone so they don't burn a hole in our in our pocket. But they will um, they will get to that standard. Um, but before then, we have cool little inventions like this. Now, as I was mentioning, this isn't the first 512 gigabyte SD card. As you see here, you can get a 512 for $229.99. And uh, if we use our handy dandy calculator here, you can see for $230 divided by 512, you know, this is 45 cents per gigabyte versus 65 cents for the micro SD. And if, if your device allows it, you know, you could get this adapter over here for $999. And uh, so you can go from a micro SD to an SD. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, for example, you can actually get a um, 512 as, as we are right now. Where I see this becoming more popularized though is again with this MacBook Pro. MacBook Pros come with an SD card slot. A lot of people don't like a big fat SD card slot hanging out. You might nick it, you might hit it, it might get accidentally popped out. So they make these, these little adapters that do sit flush and you either need like a paper clip or something to eject them. And so they're a secure way of expanding your MacBook Pro or if you have a Chromebook, things like that. Um, and, it, and it allows the micro SD. So this is where I see people using it because, um, you know, if you lose one of these SD cards, it's going to be a, a hurtful day. So having this option is not only secure and safe, but it also makes it somewhat seamless. You know, it's not you're not getting any drawbacks where again with this cable you can have a cable hanging out of your device so it really does take away the portability factor and again the whole reason we're talking about micro SDs is micro SDs are for portable devices for GoPros for switches for uh, portable laptops so uh, this solution might not be an option for you but if you are trying to get massive storage without going to a physical hard drive this is definitely an option for you as well now, I want to talk a little bit about my Raspberry Pi people. Um, there uh, is this list here. I'll put a link in the description of uh, Raspberry Pi SD cards. And it's a comprehensive list of all the different brands and micro SD cards and model numbers on the market and whether it's going to work or not in your Raspberry Pi. Now, I've done extensive uh, tests and I have to say if it's a name brand, if it's a Lexar, if it's a uh, Samsung, a PNY, um, a SanDisk, uh, for the most part they all work. The ones that don't work I notice are the full-sized SD cards, but as far as micro SD cards, if it's class 10, it's an ultra or extreme, it's going to work just fine. But the question to me was, have they tested large capacities? Because Will, will a Raspberry Pi actually recognize all 400 gigabytes on this card or all 512 gigabytes on this card? And I, my, my, my guess is yes. I really do think it will work. On this list here, you have a couple 256s where they did work, 256 gigabytes where they did work. There was a Samsung as well as a SAN disk, 256 gigabyte. So here you go. You have a, a 128 here. There it is, 256. So the Samsung Evo Plus 256 worked no problem. Uh, so I really don't think it'll be a problem because SanDisk Ultras in general have never been an issue. And uh, we can get to that, that high data capacity. Now, again, I don't necessarily recommend it though, unless, <laughs> unless you're a baller. Uh, my recommendation, especially with the Raspberry Pi 3, is you start getting into like a one terabyte hard drive. You know, a one terabyte hard drive you know, a fast one, USB 3.0, which you're not going to necessarily be able to um, get those speeds because the Raspberry Pi isn't 3.0. But when you're transferring ROMs from your computer, you could definitely take advantage of those faster speeds. And as you see here, for $60, uh, that's quite a different story as far as calculations. Uh, you're talking $55 divided by 1,000 gigabytes. Uh, that's five cents, six cents per gigabyte when we were talking 45 cents and 65 cents respectively uh, for those for those uh, storage capacities. So uh, way cheaper and you can get your Raspberry Pi to run off of a hard drive. Um, so 
that totally changes the story as far as price. And just for references, I did wanna do a price comparison. It's $20 for 60 gigabytes, 70 divided by 60. So a 64 gigabyte, a ter gigabyte micro SD card, you're paying about 33 cents per gigabyte, which is you know half that of what we're seeing with the 400 gigabyte and uh, 512. But hey, can you tell your friends you own a 512 gigabyte SD card? No, you cannot. <laughs> no, you cannot. The biggest deal here is A, the price going down. You know, the 64 gigabyte, the 128 will continue to get lower and lower and lower, uh, thus making the cost of building a Raspberry Pi, a gaming computer, uh, uh, server, whatever you're doing it for, that price will continue to go down. That to me is exciting. The other thing is the whole Nintendo Switch debate, that the Nintendo Switch does download a lot of games. It does require a lot of space. It almost... It's almost necessary to expand your file system on a Switch if you want to have a, some sort of collection of games. So what this does is it does open up uh, this possibility of having these larger collections, but as well as those people who want to go for like a 256, we're going to see the 256 drop drastically in price. So good work on Integral. I like when there's competition in the market. I only think it's going to improve overall but there you go there's a couple of options for you uh, let me know what you guys think what are you excited for uh, are you going to buy one are you not don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll catch you on the next one